We're in Barnsley for Weber Cup 14. Fans have gathered for one of the most exciting Tempin events to cheer on the stars of the sport. Team Europe and Team USA are playing for pride in this fierce competition. The Americans have a very narrow lead after Tommy Jones won the last point for Team USA. Now it's a chance for them to extend their lead once again as Mike Fagan meets Martin Larson here at the Barnsley Metrodome. We caught up with the American before the event to find out what makes him tick. I got involved in the sport through my mother and my grandfather. They were uh, both bowlers. Uh, I think my mother liked the fact that couldn't get hurt too badly playing bowling. So uh, she liked that and she brought me down to the bowling center and I, uh, I fell in love with the game right away. The thing that I love about bowling is that you really can never master it. You know, you can, you can get to a certain level and you can feel like you master it, but then there's always a new challenge awaiting. I want to win all the time. I want to win at everything I do. Um, you know, I've devoted my life to the game of bowling and, you know, I want to make sure that I'm in good shape and, uh, you know, I'm ready to compete when it's time to compete. To be able to represent uh, the U.S. and, uh, you know, be a part of this tight-knit group on the Weber Cup, uh, is really an honor. Without a doubt, we want to win this one, absolutely. We want to make sure that uh, we retain the Weber Cup. We want to show uh, the Europeans, we want to show the world that you know we have the best team in the world. Time for our final match then. Representing Europe, it is Martin Larson. Representing Team USA, Mike Fagan. We're ready for our final match of the evening session. What will happen? And can Europe draw level heading into Sunday? Over to Cass Edwards and Andy Bodfish. Indeed, the United States have the advantage as we close out this third session at the 888.com Weber Cup 14. Now then, these two, Mike Fagan, Martin Larson, met in the middle of the first session and it was an American victory. There was red on the board. 228 over 206 was the victory. Fagan was out again, beating Mika Koivinyemi in the captain's pick match. Fagan, no stranger to bowling on television, 21 TV finals on the PBA Tour. Recently came back from uh, European Tour in Vienna where he came fourth. Two team captains there, keeping an eye on what's going on in the uh, final game of the session. Mike Fagan's opened up with 10. And so has Martin Larson. Two great looking shots, right in the pocket for the right handers. Good stuff. That's the way to start off. Yeah, Martin Larson way left on the approach with his feet. Where he's, that's his starting point. Zips that ball back right into the pocket. And a big smile to start with. That means everything's fine. Just going to hope that he can stay there for the next uh, eight or nine frames. As will this man, the king of swing. Mike Fagan can't ring that temp in away. Good looking shot, hits the pocket nicely. Called the king of swing, he's got that very, very high backswing. The snap of the wrist drives that ball back into the pocket. And unfortunately, the uh, six pin lays flat in the channel and can't hit that single pin out. So it can only be a spare. Oh, or clean it could be, pass. Or it could be an open frame, and Chris Barnes can't believe it. I said earlier on, these guys, if they leave a, a temper in the corner, they haven't bowled at one for about two or three hours, and all of a sudden, 
they've got to hit a temp in. And Fagan just cannot believe what he's done. Missed it on the inside, just didn't give it any space to roll onto the pin at all. Well, that shot there of Chris Barnes head in hands could be one of the images of this Weber Cup if things don't go the United States way from here on in. Yeah, <laughs> picture speaks a thousand words. Yeah, Chris Barnes not happy with what he's seeing. Chance here for Larson and Europe. Go on. So nearly, not quite though, for the Swede. Yeah, it looked as though it had chances, didn't it? He's in the right area of the lane, he's in his zone. It's light in the pocket, but there's so much mix going on there. And that pin could have gone across and knocked it over. Just didn't have quite enough on it, did it? And down comes the pin spotter to grab it. Can only be a spare. And that's the way you take the 10 pins away, Mike Fagan. Mike's up now, frame three. Slightly pressure time on Fagan after missing that single pin spare, which you really shouldn't miss. Got to get his confidence back and uh, get right in the pocket. Well, he's going to have the opportunity to shoot at this 10 pin yet again, straight away. So really putting pressure on himself. This one really has to be good. Well, this is where you really learn about the mental toughness of these guys, because this is the same test. He failed it just a few moments ago. No bother this time. That's how to make you spare with that standing 10 pin. And that will do, Mike, the world of good. Larson's got a an early lead, small as it may be. It's Larson. It is two strikes from three for the Swede. Yeah, really nice looking shot here from Martin. It's a situation so far, it's early doors, but it's a small lead for Team Europe. Larson showing some of the form that he's uh, had recently on the European Tempin Bowling Tour. A couple of victories, one out in the Middle East. Coming here to the Weber Cup, but as all players in this event, they'll soon be going straight back to the States for the PBA World Series of Bowling. <laughs> Fagan wins 10, his second strike in four frames. Too many spares there, really, but uh, you can't complain about spares. One open frame is absolutely acceptable. Just needs to turn a few spares into strikes if he possibly can, especially in this game. It's the last game of the session. Twenty strikes for Larson. Oops, not Somebody quite said. twenty-one yet. Yeah, he's gone high through the head pin with a soft shot. He's broken nothing up, and what he has left is called the big four. It's two on the left, two on the right. It's the four, six, seven, ten. Similar to the seven, ten, it's almost that impossible. It is makeable. He's got to chip one of those uh, four or six pins across and hope for a bit of luck and bounce it out. No, not quite. Open frame from Martin Larson. Now then, this is pretty interesting stuff between the Swede Martin Larsen and Mike Fagan. Just enjoyed something in an advantage at the start of this match, the last match of the session, but no longer. Big ball for Fagan, working on a strike. Larson's had his open frame, and that's got to be right in there for another 10. Two in a row. Yeah, two good looking shots from the King of Swing, Mike Fagan. Snap there off the wrist. Gets the ball just about to his mark at about 44 feet down the lane and rips the rack.
Left those three on the right hand side, Martin. There's something he doesn't like. Yeah, two two shots out of the pocket, right through the head pin. Leaves the three, the six, and the ten pin, which is a makeable spare, unlike his uh, last frame when he had the big four. Just a little bit of overreaction at back end. Obviously, that last area of the lane is now getting dry, and the balls are reacting it on it a bit more fiercely than uh, certainly Larson is uh, liking. Nicely done, nicely dispatched there from Martin Larson.